going live. What if we're showing live? Then live. So hi, this is a live stream from Blue and Handyman. I'm Conrad. Um, this is my first time doing the stream. We have a slight technical issue, so I have no clue if you can hear me or if there's even anybody there. And uh, there may well not be, but that would be all right. Okay, no, we're not going to end the stream. We're going to keep going. But apparently someone's watching. I think I might know who that might be. Now, I'm wondering, can you hear us all right? So if you can, that'd be great. Um, in the meantime, what I'll do is um, I'll carry on. I'll have a quick look. There. And I'm getting a uh, no signals from my uh, studio crew. But um, welcome to Lewis Handyman, and um, my name is Conrad. This is an online tutorial uh, for basic woodworking, and it's for beginners, absolute beginners. So I thought with this is with my students, I also teach carpentry and joinery, with my students, I see that they are uh, working on projects and getting a little frustrated. And I wanted to do one that's fully live where I make the mistakes and have to sort them out. And what I'm actually going to be making will be, I'm going to be moving around a bit. What I'm going to be making is a bracket like this. It's just a small triangular shelf bracket where you could turn it upside down, do it as a shelf like that, or it could be a builder square. And It's got a number of joints on it. I'll try and match that picture up to it. Let's see it over there. It's got a couple of joints on it that are a little tricky if you're brand new to it. But after this, we will go through, as I go through it, I'll go through it step by step. And um, I can go into it in more detail uh, in following tutorials. But it will have a dovetail. And an angle bracket, which is going to be a mortise and ten. It's as much to help my existing students or anyone else that's looking to do woodwork and show you that this work it's not actually that easy. It takes a bit of time and it's frustrating. So if you're looking to learn this or you've started out to learn this and you're making something, if you get a bit annoyed or frustrated with it initially, take your time at it. It's going to take practice. And it's a natural material. The timber is a natural material. So we have defects in it, such as knots and other things. And we need to work through them. Okay. I'm going to have an idea. Is there any sound? Because I'm having a look at a monitor over here and it's fine. I can see that there's no one here. Uh, but this will go out afterwards and I'll try and edit this. Uh, turn on subscribers. I wonder if there's sound. How can I, I can hear a sound. So I'm wondering, okay, possibly that's coming from my mic. And that would be great if it is. That would be absolutely great if that's coming from this mic. But this says it's off. So I don't know where that sound is coming from. And have we got... We have that device there. Well, too late to, to, to muck about with that. Let's leave that in and just do it. And we'll see. Bum, 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 bum. I'm going to ramble as I do this. I've got a bit of timber here and this timber is 44 mil by 27 mil it's not very big but it's a nice size for a small bracket and this is exactly how you'd buy it in the store pardon me you get a full length like that in the store you're going to take it home or you get it like this in uh, uh, the um somewhere in your workshop and um, when I say workshop possibly where you're studying and that's it you've got to cut it up yourself you'll also get a drawing something to follow 
I haven't written on the back of that. Now on this drawing, this is your working document. And with your working document, you ideally want to be making notes on it. I'm making a lot of notes on here. And one of the notes that you start to make out would be what is your face side and your edge side. And check all the measurements that are on the document as well. Now, I could end up flicking the camera and see if we can get a slightly closer one to these drawings. And we'll be able to look at this and put in some measurements on it. That's wonderful. Great. That's looking at it from the other direction. So that's what it's going to end up looking like at the end. But on these documents, we don't have a whole lot of measurements. We've been told that the whole top is going to be 350 mil, and then this side is 350 mil. And this bracket hits this inside corner and this inside corner down 275 mil. So we need to do some calculations on that. So we have a length of timber that's going to be 350, and another length of timber that's going to be another 350. So we know that's going to be 700 in total, plus something across here. And we don't know what that is, but we're going to guess that it's a lot more than 400. So as long as, um, if we pan out, I'll start marking up this timber, please. Great. So I've got a length of timber out here, and that's 2.4 meters. So I'm happy that that's going to be long enough. And um, instead of doing my 350 mil, I'm going to allow it to be a little over on our corners. We're going to have it a little over. So we say panned out a little and until I, I zoom in when I'm actually going to mark up some other stuff. So let's mark up our 350 and let's give it a bit extra. So I'm going to measure that one at 360. Uh, I'm going to do 370. So that's my mark there for 370. Let's take that one out. That was the first mistake. 370, and we're going to take another 370 from that direction. Now, ideally, we leave our ruler there and double it up, so that's going to be 740. If my mats are all right, 740. So that's our one side. That's our other side, and that whole length there is definitely going to be wide enough for our width. Um... Now, whilst I have the timber like this, this is the time that I want to mark up my face and edge and I'm going to label my parts. Because when we've got when we've got separate bits, it will get confusing. I could cut them all up and then not remember which is which, where's the face and where's the edge. So we're going to do a face and edge markings on this now. And I will get a close up to it. That'll take a moment. There we are. We're closer up to that. What I'm talking about with a face and edge marking is we want to check that this timber has two nice sides, at least two nice sides. It has all right sides on the other, but some are better than the others. We're going to pick the two best sides and we will test them and see if they're actually square. I had a great um, comment recently about these two items, because these are going to help me test this if it's square. But neither of these are actually square. <laughs> That's called a tri-square, tries to be square, and this is a quick square. And when you hear a carpenter or a joiner talking about square, what they mean is 90 degree angle. So from here, across here, or inside this one, is a 90 degree angle. Four 90s will make a square. So we're going to look at this timber. Let's see which are the best sides. So I'm just going to move that. I prefer this side. Slightly smoother, there's less knots. 
that's what's looking out. So this is what's going to be on show. The good side is going to be on show. The bad side is going to be hidden. There's going to be a shelf on top of that. So we mark it. And we mark it with this symbol for a face. And this symbol for an edge. So that's our face side and that's our edge side. If I put that up, we won't know where the rest of them are. So we're going to put plenty of these marks just whilst we're working with this learning. As I said, this is for beginners. Face and edge. Now, the face, it's like a backward P. No, oh, it's a normal P when you flick on it. And this triangle points to, because if that's all you can see, it points down towards the edge. And if all you can see is the edge, it points towards the face. But it's massively important that we put this on for when we're measuring and marking out later. And that will become clearer when we have more pieces cut up. I'm going to grab a water and, pardon me, So for a moment, if we zoom out, I'll show you a few additional tools. Terrific. Hopefully we've still got sound. If we haven't got sound, hurrah. We need to talk to the technical department <laughs> next week and get them to sort it out sooner. All right. Um, This tool here is called a bench hook. It hooks on the bench. We don't get too fancy with names and carpentry and joinery. Bench hook, hooks on the bench. Brilliant. And um, I'm gonna mark this. I wanna cut a bit of this off because it's a little too long from here. So that's there and there. I'm gonna cut it there, but that doesn't sit right on my bench. It's wobbling around too much. So if that's the case, support it with something else. Put another support under it. Sit there. Now I'm going to ideally get a straight line and marking this up will be from here. I'll jump in close to this again. Hopefully we're not jumping around too much. Great. I've been told by my IT department we're good on the sound. That's great. So when we're marking this up, it's pretty important to get these lines all the way around here straight and to line up. And there's a particular way to do that. If we're going to take, I'm going to introduce, we're going to take something that can create a straight edge line. My favorite one, which I use a lot, is a combination combination square. Or your tri-square or quick square. So let's go with my combination square. I love this. It, uh, I'll go into more detail on this one another time, on how this is such a powerful, useful tool. I'm going to do a lot of what these people can. Now, remember, here's our edge, and there's our face. And this is our mark, where I said we'd cut our second timber. And I'm actually also going to mark out here where my waist is, and that's my waist. Now the waist is very important where I'm marking it because I'm gonna cut on the waist side of the line. So here's our mark. I have, I have to turn the combination square with the body here and the ruler here. This body must always stay on the face or the edge. <laughs> So at the moment, the body is tight against this face side. And if I draw that line there, that line is 90 degrees to this side. I'm going to turn this over. Let's do it this way that you can see it. We've got the body on the edge side. We've lined up our mark there. And we're going to put a line through there. As we keep turning round, we cannot 
do this, turn the timber and put this against here because it's not a face or an edge. So we need to turn our room, our, our, our combination square to catch the body on the face, line up your line, and we'll get that through there. Okay, turn it over. The body again is on the edge. Move that down there a fraction. We'll sharpen our pencil in a moment. Get it that line spot on there. So that will follow that line right the way through. But because this thing is a bit long, I'm going to cut this one. I'm going to leave the camera on close up just for a moment whilst I start my cut. Now, if you are studying this in a college, you would have a very similar saw to this one, which is a tenon saw. But if you're starting out, these are easily available in Screwfix or Amazon, and they're very useful. It's got, when you look at the end of this, yeah, it's got a rigid back. And that's helpful to keep the whole blade rigid. I've got another one in the workshop here, which is slightly heavier. A little more costly if you've been doing it a little longer and you want to invest in something a bit better. But that's quite a nice saw. So it's got a good weight on it. And that's helpful with your cutting. So I'm going to try and... I, I don't want to rush this because that's where I'll make mistakes. Or anyone will make mistakes. So it is bloody time consuming. And um, there's our waste site. And um, as I'm cutting this one, I'm going to get that some here. I'm going to make a small mark on right on the edge of that timber. Let's move that over a little. Let's see as I cut through that. So you, can, you can see the line. Yeah, I can cut. So I'm taking that and just cutting on the waist side of the line, not the right or the left, the waist. And if I'm hashing that corner over there, just get that started. I have to keep blowing that timber out of the way. The other thing that I'm doing is keeping my heel of my hand up against that bench block and keeping that timber in there. And I'm holding it securely but also guiding the blade with my thumb. Well, I don't guide my blade with the, my thumb sticking out here because I've actually cut that far too many times and it's very sensitive. So, so I use my knuckle to guide it. And it's held up quite high. I'm going to guide that blade there. Put down here and I'm going to keep that going. And at this stage, if we could, if we could pan out, so that we can see where I'm actually standing as well when you're cutting, if you're aiming for the straight line. So if we can pan out to the main camera and um, hope you can see it, if it's um, available. So when we're cutting, ideally to keep our straight line, you hold the saw, um, just with these two fingers and your thumb, index finger straight out, your blade, wrist, elbow, shoulder in a straight line. See, I'm standing out of the way of the line. I'm not in front of it, I'm to the side of it. So my arm, the blade and shoulder can be in front of that line. Not you gotta keep going that dirt out of the way so you can see that you're standing on your line. Now the cut that it's making is called the kerf and we want to keep that kerf out here and once we've cut across the top of that timber we're going to eyeball this one and watch that come straight down. Uh, keeping the blade plumb. Keeping the plumb is just straight down horizontal. 
So again, close up on this one. Okay, close up on that. I will come down. Close up on this one. Okay, close As I'm coming through the end, I'm happy to cut into the bench hook, not into the bench. That's why my timber is over the bench hook. And as I cut it, also that it's on the bench hook, the fibers off the back of that timber won't be too much. So we keep our blade there. Let's put that, that's going to drop it around. Away it goes. Let's leave it close up. And we'll get a look at our line. So there's our cut. Oh yeah, close up. So there's our cut. We're pretty much on our pencil line, so I'm pleased with that. But that was taking a bit of time. And if we put our timber standing upright, that should stay upright, not be at a massive angle falling over. All right, so let's just do a cut. And we can cut the timber across the grain, so it's a cross cut. Not that end right. Now, whilst I have it, and I'm blabbing away, I remember to label up my material. So let's label this now and we'll start working out what's going to go where. So I said that this is going to be marked all the way around. And then when we look at our working document, it tells us here, there's our edge. There's our edge pointing in. This one we'll come to later. So if our edges point that way, this will actually be this. So this timber will match our edge here. So if that's going to go there, then that one will be our top piece. So let's give that a label and call that our top. This one is going to be our left. Terrific, top and left. And label there, and I can write in here as well. Uh, now, hopefully, we'll get into um, putting a bit more of this this evening. It'll be nice to maybe get a double tail out of it. Um, we can pan out, please. Oh. When I start a new workshop in college, typically I would get everybody to introduce themselves. I can do more work while I'm talking, can't I? Um, then I'll lose my concentration. But typically I would get people to introduce themselves, but it's quite a bit different here because I can't see you. And I've no clue if, you're, if there is anybody watching or not. Then you might watch this later on a replay and fast forward it. But if you are watching, hello and welcome, and let us know where you're watching from and why. The, the, you know, have you done carpentry and joinery or woodwork before? Because this is different. Some of the stuff that I'd be going through is different to what you get in the States. I've never taught or been educated in the States, and um, I know there's a lot of woodworking classes over there, but, okay, but being in um, the UK, the tutorials that I'll be going through follow the UK system. They follow the UK system in that um, you've got a diploma, you can get a diploma in a level one carpentry and joinery, and then level two and three, and you can go down the carpentry route or you can go down the joinery route and even before you do your diploma there are um, courses in construction uh, carpentry and joinery and what i'll be taking you through in these tutorials and on this channel follows that setup so you could use this as grinds Rhymes, if we use that word anymore, uh, additional support, somewhere to look 
is when I do this in a class, right, let's put this one this my way, so I'll double check it. Um, so we're on 370. When I do this in a class, I do small demos, but I, I wouldn't do a demo of the whole product that we're making. So that's why it's helpful to do it here on a video. And you can catch up on bits of it. All right, so I'm putting this one on my waist side and I'm going to hash that out there as well. Cut that down. So if you part the sudden somewhere else, let us know what kind of books that you need to follow for your criteria. And um, maybe you're not even doing the course. Uh, I have some students that are doing career changes and they're doing this privately. They just want to learn something else for themselves and be able to put some stuff together. Yeah, so that's it. All right. We have um, just a little check on something. I uh, we got uh, we still got our sound. How are you doing there? Oh, I'm looking over here, but I'm looking at the screen as well. And uh, good question. I've got a question. I love when I get some questions. What is a dovetail? So okay, he's about that. The dovetail is a type of joint that we're going to use on this timber. And if I get this one apart, it looks like a dove's tail. It's slightly triangular. And that's what I'm going to mark out next, actually. And it's a bit of a difficult joint, but you can make these look quite fancy. And it just so happens, if we get a close-up on this one, I can show you a dovetail that we've actually been cut. So let's see if we can get close to this. Okay, let me just switch over. So when you take a look at that, the timber here is splayed out and it goes into this one here. That has to be splayed out as well. And that will slot in here. Like a dog's tail, and if the fingers want them, you make a lot of nice ones. It's a very strong joint, depending on how it's used. I can pull that timber out that way, but if I was to use it this way, it wouldn't pull down this way. And typically, you get these kind of joints on drawers because you might be pulling that and it will pull out. Whereas if this was straight, it would just pull apart. Go, you know, wedges that in. So it gives us a nice wedge. On that, let's pan out. And I'm going to start marking up some of the dovetail. Because I'm going to lay out my timbers if we pan out. And I'll blow the dust away. I should use a brush. Right. So, uh, when you get a bit more accurate, I can do a um, uh, marking knife on this. Uh, let's put that one over here. Now, it's best that we mark up this timber regularly checking the working document. Keep an eye on the working document so that you can lay your timber out like that. Uh, I'm just going to jump in here for a moment and see if we've got uh, some sort of power before we lose everyone. There. I don't know what to plug into. Right, bear with me one second. This is the joys of going live. What do I plug into? 
uh, we might let us know if we lose any sound and we will um in here where is it sounds good um if i'm able to see some of the comments that's actually terrific if I'm able to see them, that'll be great. And I'll try and keep an eye on them as we're going through. The other thing is, uh, if I don't, I'll be able to go back over this afterwards, and I will look at it then um, uh, after I've done this session. I'll be able to go back through the comments. At least I think I will, because I haven't actually done a live cast like this, so I don't know whether you can answer the comments afterwards or not. So hopefully we can. Now, again, I'm going to follow my document. Um, your working drawings. You want to keep an eye on that and regularly be checking it. So I said that this is left, and that's important that I've labelled it now. So even though I'm putting down as my left, it's not good enough that I just put it there like that. Looks all right, looks fine, but the face and edge isn't in the right place. This face is up here, but it's not like that on the document. So we have to turn it round so that our, our face and edge sides represent what's on that working document the same with this one that's going to be here now they're laid out that's the way that's better and we can keep track of what we're doing then we're going to mark out our dovetail first and we're going to make this part when we get this set up and that's where we're happy with it we're going to move on to our crossbar the crossbar there will be two mortise and tens. That's where one piece of timber would stick in, stick into the other up here. So we've got to make the holes for it. This is not, this, this is a run through on this project. It is very, it's challenging for a brand new absolute beginner, but there will be smaller chunk size tutorials which would build up to this project but i thought it'd be good to thing and try and see a build and it will not happen tonight this will take ages when students are making these in college they would have a three-hour session for a number of weeks and it could take them uh three to nine to be working on that that's a long time but that's for a beginner <laughs> I'm not going to spend 18 hours doing it. It will be quicker than that. But I need to also get on with it. Okay, our dovetail. So there are particular measurements for our dovetail. And we have another tool to help us with that, to get the angle. We want to get the angle um, looking nice and neat. So let's get a close up on this one. And I'll, I'll go through marking out our dovetail that's terrific so i've laid out our timbers now on this one i'm going to leave an overhang i'm going to leave an overhang here as long as what's left and that sense there is 350 because we can always cut that off so a good 10 mil overhang We'll put a line there. That's going to be our edge of the timber. That's where that's going to be that one. Whilst we're here, we're going to mark this timber up. We're going to measure this one. Make sure that we've still got our 350. Yes, it is. And that's going to give us a mark on that one. So the timbers will slot in here. Now, when we look at a dovetail that's actually done, This goes in this way, it goes in here. It's important to know which of these to cut first. Because if we cut this one, well, let's call it, this one's called a plug. It plugs in to this socket, it goes in there. So when you're doing your dovetail, ideally, 
In this scenario, you cut the plug first. And we're going to mark that out first. And when we mark it and cut it, then we're going to transfer that onto this one. And as we go through it, it will become clearer while we're doing that. Now, for our marking out, we're using our combination square. We're going to use our bench and our bench vise because we just don't have enough hands. Let's get that out there a little. If we can see that there, that's good because I can move around here. That's my top. So I'm going to secure that in the bench vise like that. And I'm going to take the combination square. And we've been given the measurement on another document to say how deep that is across here. Another one to check is with the dovetail on here, we want to take a third of that timber, approximately a third of timber keeps the strength pretty well when you're working with it, dividing it into three. So the width of this timber is four to five mil, a third of that is 15. So I'm going to set my combination square on 15. And I'll get that as close as I can. 15. With that, I'm going to have to pause my talking and mark this round square first. So, you see, it takes a bit of concentration. We've got that, and that's my. Oh, how are we? Okay. Um, so, we just got to pause for a moment. Till I try and sort out the sound. Sorry that I've lost you. And we'll get that going. Ooh. All right. Well, um, let's get the power back in. Take the power out. Where's anyone? Yeah, 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 if you can, if you're ready. Okay. And, uh, okay. All right, let me have a think like this. No, we'll have to get extra ones sent forward. So I'll get the sound back in then. So that's. I have an idea. I have, I have an idea then. All right then. So this should be. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. Anymore. This might work. Let's try this out. Yeah. <laughs> How's that? So we and sorry we're having uh, problems with sound over back soon. Oh, oh, can hear on that. All right then. So there's just one. Oh, this is may have gone off. Wait. Great. I think we have a bit of sound back on. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how to change that then. Um, no, let's see. Well, that's the joys of doing this. I'll come around to it and I'll talk. I'll come around to it. Yeah, bring that out here. Right. I'll do that. Yeah. Hang on. Okay. So how are we on sound? All right. So uh, 
I'm out of a on a technical issue, which happens. And I believe you can hear me now, but if we do keep that on, we're going to end up losing our sound. But what I'm going to do is say so far, hopefully you've picked something up. And bear with me one minute. this again another and um take it from there 